Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me know on a scale from 0 to 10, how is my audio? Mainly, mainly my audio. Please let me know if you guys can hear me okay and also if you guys can see me okay. It's a pleasure to be here with you all to talk about this fascinating method named Lean Six Sigma. No doubt one of the most powerful methods for solving structural problems, systemic problems, yes? And I am very, very, very happy to have you all here. Um, and I have a, an interesting question uh, from Arcel. Uh, I would like to know the titles of your samba songs. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, I have normally one of the songs that I enjoy the most is this one here. So uh, the name is uh, Mas Canada. Mas Canada. Let me type here for you. Um, from Sergio Mendes. Mas que nada. From Sergio Mendes. And, and this song became famous because of the movie Rio, you know? The movie, the, the, the cartoon, yeah? No, samba. L let's talk a little bit about samba. Let's talk a little bit about samba, okay? Samba is a, it's a very special rhythm because normally the strongest beat is not the first you know because it's it's very it's very common that in all in the vast majority of the rhythms that the first beat is the strongest so if we take a waltz for example yeah uh, one two three one two three one see the strongest is here Wonderful samba no samba for samba you have um, it's on the second beat I don't know if you can feel that creates a kind of a, a different environment, you know? named uh, surdo surdo I don't know how to say that in English um, that is responsible for this beat in samba and it's very important that the person that is playing surdo do not mess it up you know and uh, and then you have for example uh, uh, samba but the same the same trick you know Brazil Brasil, 
Now again, marking the second beat kind of more more uh, clearly. And a lot of this, a lot of this comes from Africa, from Africa. The genesis of samba is pure Africa. And we appreciate, we Brazilians, we appreciate this treasure that came from Africa, you know. And then if you <coughs> go a little bit further, and we mix this samba with jazz. Jazz. started you know listening to these guys mainly from the US <clears throat> and then many people say that the combination of samba this is kind of questionable but many people say that the combination of samba and jazz it's what we know as bossa nova bossa means rhythm and nova means new yeah so um, for example girl from Ipanema There is a kind of hidden samba. But now with a, a much more sophisticated harmony, right? Sorry. Jobim, Antonio Carlos Jobim, one of the most important Brazilian composers <coughs> of all times. Yes. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for asking. 
Wonderful. So I could see, I can see Arcel, uh, Camogelo, how are you, Thomas, Abeku, how are you, Oluva, Kemi, how are you, Yotam, I can see Guru Prasanna, I can see Rashid, I can see Anas, Ongani, thank you so much, Kigak, Kigak for joining us. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you all are doing excellent. I hope you all are doing excellent. And once again, I am very happy to be here with you. Because today, I will be sharing five that I consider top pitfalls, you know, that you must avoid when you are running Lean Six Sigma projects. Because just a quick recap, just a quick recap. Lean Six Sigma is a method to analyze and solve very complex problems, you know, I, 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 I am dedicating the vast majority of my energy, professional energy, you know, to study and practice this method since 2001, you know, so more than 20 years, I had a chance to run more than 500 projects. <laughs> the majority of them well succeeded, but I have a lot of projects that were not well succeeded. And I have to tell you, I have a fascination to understand, you know, the reasons why uh, projects, you know, do not go very well. By the way, my article with the highest number of citations is an article with Professor Gijo and Professor um, Lisa here from Brazil, that we pretty much deep dived, yeah, more than 200 cases, 200 projects across the globe, you know, reasons why continuous improvement projects did not work very well, <laughs> failure, you know, the, to deeply understand the failures, the reasons why um, continuous improvement projects did not um, come to a good end, you know. Perfect. And then I will be sharing this with you all. And just again, a quick recap, Lean Six Sigma, we want to run projects to solve these complex prob problems. Yeah. And uh, we can run projects in manufacturing where the method was created, but this is very much applicable for service as well. Nowadays, I have students in hospitals. I have attorneys. I have lawyers that are taking the green belt training that are becoming certified green belts. I have owners of small businesses. You know, I have teachers applying Lean Six Sigma to improve the quality of their of their sessions, of their classes, yeah, because the applicability of the method is immense. It's huge, 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 huge. Yeah, and why do I want to share these uh, pitfalls to for you to avoid, you know, when you are running your projects? Because wise people will learn, you know, smart people will learn from their mistakes, but wise people will learn from the mistakes of uh, other people, <laughs> you know? So yes, I'll be sharing here mistakes that I saw on my mentees, that I have a chance to see when I was evaluating projects, and also mistakes that I've made myself, yeah? I'll be sharing uh, these with you, and I'll be taking a look here in the chat because I really want to be, to guarantee that this session here is a mix of, you know, content, but also Q&A, because I have a sense that you guys enjoyed, or you guys are enjoying the Q&A sessions that I am running. Um, uh, I, I had a chance to run in the past two weeks, and I'll be mixing, you know, sessions like where I'll be bringing some important topics, you know, with Q&A sessions. I hope you enjoy that. And I'll do all my best, all, all, all my best to touch base with you at least once a week, unless there is some important event, mainly on the same time, as we'll have another white belt wave next week. So next week, uh, we will not be together again, because I will be running another white belt wave, okay? Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Joshua. Thank you so much, Devashi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have a question. I have a question. Who, who, where are you in the Lean Six Sigma journey? 
type here for me. Marcelo, I am a certified white belt. Marcelo, I am a certified yellow belt. Marcelo, I am a certified green belt. Marcelo, I am a, I, I am I, I, I just found you on YouTube. I just found you on the internet. So please type here for me where are you in the Lean Six Sigma journey? <sighs> Please type here for me, where are you? Okay, so we have certified white belt, we have another certified white belt, another one, certified green belt, wonderful. Yeah, because uh, even knowing that for you to run a project, to run a project, you know, the recommendation is that you become a certified green belt, because again, white belt has a good knowledge, general knowledge about the make, about our framework, Yellow belt can be part of a Lean Six Sigma project, but a green belt can lead a project. Yeah, so if you aim, you know, to become a Lean Six Sigma project leader, you definitely want to consider to consider um, becoming a green belt, a certified Lean Six Sigma green belt. Okay, wonderful. So I see a lot of belts here. I see a lot of belts white yellow green perfect perfect so please don't let me down don't let me down i know you guys will not disappoint me what is our framework what tell me the five letters that represent our framework please type here for me the five letters that represent our framework our lean six sigma framework Please type here for me. A wonderful Kennedy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Adronic. Thank you so much, um, Camogelo. Thank you, Kirui. Thank you so much, Abeku. Ayelen. Thank you so much. The make. Perfect. Perfect. The make. Excellent. Excellent. <coughs> the first letter stands for define. We must define a problem to be solved, yeah? And during White Belt, probably you saw me <coughs> speaking, saying about the importance of more than defining, guaranteeing that your problem that must be solved is a high priority problem. And it must be a high priority for clients. And I know it sounds obvious. I know, I know, I know, I know. And I have to tell you something. I don't see in literature, I don't see in literature, authors reinforcing this point very much, that the problem to be solved must be connected to something that is critical to the client. So sometimes I have an impression that they just take it for granted. And this is very dangerous. This is very, very dangerous. Why? Because if your problem that you are trying to solve is not connected to a true customer need, a true customer need, the risk associated to your initiative, to your process, to your project, is high by nature. Is high by nature. And when I say the risk is high, I'm not only talking about the probability of at the end of the day you have, you know, positive results. I'm not talking about that. Only about that. This is one 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 part of the of the entire picture. The other part is sometimes you can run a successful project, but because you didn't touch something significant, the relevance of your project goes down. This is very serious, very serious. Because then it's, it's the consolidation of what we call waste. It's pure waste. 
it's pure waste and maybe you are asking yourself how how is it possible you know a make project that came to an end successfully and professor marcelo is saying that it, it can be somehow not successful you know yes because you can solve the wrong problem a problem that is not relevant to the business to the internal customer to the external customer this is possible it is possible but why why a belt would work on something that it is not relevant there are many reasons many reasons that touched my heart at the beginning of my career and that's i, I want to share that with you my my failures you know the things that did not work from my side you know things that i saw and i see on my day-to-day -day activities as a mentor on my consultancy projects you know in minitab the company that i work today yeah in these more than 20 years you do not want to check the box because of your project certification i'll say again please take note maybe you want to take note of that please do not check the box do you know this expression check the box check the box I, I was not planning to play the guitar. I was not planning. Then I saw the question from um, I saw the question from Arcel, from Arcel, asking about the name of the song. And then when I saw this question, something came to my heart, you know. And I was not able to control. And then I brought my guitar. And then I start playing from the bottom of my heart from the very bottom of my heart i was not checking the box checking the box means i am doing just to do <laughs> i have something to tell you <laughs> i have something to tell you i just came right now one hour ago I, I i went to my pilates because i have yeah i have here on my lower back uh, I have some improvement opportunities, you know, I have some improvement opportunities on my lower back. So Pilates, Pilates for the rest of my life, you know, sometimes I am on a mood, on a Pilates mood, you know, and sometimes not, sometimes not. So one hour ago, I went to, to, to do my Pilates on a checking the box mode I, I i i want i want to be 100 honest here with you you know i went to my pilates on a checking the box mode yes wonderful now i am free to go to my session you know and as you guys can imagine i love to do this i love to be here with you guys i have a passion I, I, I see myself as an educator, you know, this is the one of the things that I enjoy the most in my life, you know. And why am I saying this? When you go to run a DMake project, a Lean Six Sigma project, do not put yourself on a check the box or checking the box mode because of the certification. Depending on the company, on the corporation, you can get a promotion you can get a bonus money by 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 concluding a project you know as a black belt for example you must do asq says you must run at least two projects two real projects as projects as a black belt you know uh, so see there is a temptation there's a temptation that you that that you finish your project just to finish just just to have you know a piece of evidence to show off and uh, and say that okay now i have you know i am a certified black belt yeah so please on the fine phase on the fine phase be very careful be very careful with this temptation 
of reaching, of touching something that is not relevant. And sometimes you will find, you will find problems that are relevant and are not very complex. For example, projects recommended for green belts. Medium, medium, medium low, you know, complexity. It is possible to find projects that are relevant. And again, relevance is measured by the connection of the pos potential positive results to the customer needs. It has to do with the customer, with the final customer. So uh, it's always very delicate, very sensitive to give real examples because of the um, because of the fact that you, that you cannot disclose your information from the companies that you are working for or that I had a chance to work for in the past. But let me try to to to, to dribble, you know, a few elements and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, present here for you one of the the biggest mistakes I have ever had. In my career, um, I was running a project um, on an automotive sec on an automotive company. In fact, it's an auto part, you know. Um, and then the project came came from the following voice of the business: We are spending too much money with electrical energy. <coughs> too much money, you know. So we have the welding machines, manual welding machines, to pretty much to pretty much finish up the the connections, you know, with the wire and the and the the, the, the final metal connector. Wonderful, and the idea of the project was to minimize this cost. But I was so much, so much involved in the voice of this one leader, voice of this one leader, that I did not check the relevance of the project with the other leaders. Because see, in a pro if you are a Greenbelt student, you know that we have a hierarchy. Yeah, we have the project leader, we have the sponsor or the process owner, and then we have the champion. And we must, must get full alignment with champion. On the fine phase, you must get full alignment with champion. And I did not. I took for granted. I took for granted. I understood that. And, and he was my friend. <clears throat> this is a problem. It can be a problem. Yeah, sometimes... Sometimes it's dangerous, you know, to mix up, you know, friendship with business. Sometimes this is dangerous, dangerous. And he was my personal friend and uh, as a coincidence. In fact, we started working together and then we became friends. Yeah. And then when he said, hey, Marcelo, I have a great opportunity, you know, for a project. And I wanted to, to, to help my friend, you know. <laughs> See, feel, you feel the pitfall. And there is nothing wrong in trying to help a friend. There is nothing wrong, you know. Please don't get me wrong. But you need to be very careful, very careful. You know, because there, at this point, me, as a, at that point, I was a black belt. I was not a master black belt. At that point, I was there. I, I was being paid by the company to solve relevant problems, you know? And again, I got involved. I got involved, you know, by his voice. It's the voice. It's the view. I am creating this now. VOF. It's the voice of the friend. <laughs> Instead of listening, you know, to the voice of the customer, I listen to the voice of the friend. And I didn't check. I didn't check with Champion. And I just ran the project. I, I, I included the project in the portfolio. You know, I had other projects and that's okay. <clears throat> you know, wrong decision. Wrong decision. F 16 years ago. 16 years ago. 
wrong decision wrong decision because then the project was very well success I, I i i love the method i love the method so the make was applied beautifully beautifully to the wrong problem <laughs> beautifully to a irrelevant problem you know amazing amazing process mapping amazing project charter the most beautiful cypoc ever you know and hypothesis tests and capability analysis and control charts and root cause analysis and ishikawa pairwise comparison and uh the the you know no regression no regression but a beautiful action plan impact effort matrix and then at the end of the day the result was ridiculous why because marcelino did not check what was the rate accorded yeah to the energy with the to the with the energy supplier and the rate i don't know in the country where you are but here in brazil it's very different yeah what i pay for electricity it's much much more expensive you know by kilowatts per hour uh kilowatts hour it's much much more expensive that for companies yeah for for corporations you know they pay much 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 i don't know 10 times less i think you know and at the end i don't know the pro the final result was like one thousand dollars per year you know ridiculous ridiculous and again because i got involved you know this is just one example of going off off side you know um when listening to the voice of the customer you know this is a trap it's a trap it's a pitfall that you must avoid you must avoid because the higher the connection to the voice to a true customer need the higher the relevance the higher the relevance the higher the support you get support you will get more pressure sometimes i feel belts avoiding projects that touch very relevant problems because they will be on spot you know they will be on stage and everybody you need to re they will need to report every week you know but believe me believe me believe me it's better to be on spot you know with the proper support from the leadership than running something that is fluffy no teeth you know you don't want you don't want to run fluffy projects it's better i don't know not running in my opinion you know yeah because many people think that running uh uh low impact projects it's better than nothing and i i don't believe on that i think it, nothing is better than running <laughs> yeah because it has to do it has to do with your the management of your energy so it's better doing nothing and kind of recharging yourself, you know, and then run relevant projects, then running irrelevant projects. Please, 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 please. Time is limited. Energy is limited. Yeah, you can run, you know, limited scoped projects. The scope is small, but touching something relevant, touching something important yeah does it make sense so the very first pitfall to avoid please do not on the fine phase do not put yourself on the check in the box mode out I'll, I'll check here the um, the questions what does it mean to check the box yeah check the box uh it's like to do something just to do just for the sake of doing you know i i i without purpose without purpose you know doing just because my boss asked for example you know yeah you may have a checklist of things to do and you may want to tick on the box in the checklist there are two ways to do that you actually do everything in the checklist you just do it for the sake of ticking yeah beautiful amex amex db beautiful beautiful your your 
response is perfect <laughs> so please let me know let me know if the first pitfall to avoid makes sense for you made sense for you yeah on the fine phase please let me know if it made sense for you it makes sense for you yeah <clears throat> and then i'll go now for the second phase it's one recommendation per phase as you can imagine right the first one on define phase you know yeah pick this battle pick this battle do not run just to run for the sake of running yeah <clears throat> measure phase measure phase the main objective of measure phase is to have a good picture of the size of the problem. You must have a good picture of the size of the problem. Let me open up here a uh, mini tab and see if you guys remember that. So on measure phase, you must have a picture that involves central tendency, variation, and customer specification or specifications. You must have that. This is non-negotiable. This is non-negotiable. Okay? So let me know if you guys can see my, my screen. think it's okay right <clears throat> yeah please let me know if you can see me and see my screen as well so you have your baseline I don't know let's suppose you want to reduce the lead time yeah of a certain process lead time um, or let's suppose you want to optimize the um, the, the diameter the diameter of a multi-wide copper cable you know and then let's suppose you have your baseline with 100 data points and and one yeah so the kind of picture that you must have that you must have is this one here this one here yeah so wonderful beautiful that you have a mean that's okay let me just zoom you know it's beautiful that you have a mean 9.8 but is this good or bad i don't know i don't know tell me the specification limits lower spec limit and upper spec limit oh interesting so between 9 and 15 so now now many professionals many professionals would stop here they would stop here and say it's all right it's all right customer wants from 9 to 15 in terms of diameter and that's it and they avoid looking to the standard deviation and here I have a picture of variation. So important. So important. 
you know and and i need i must i must i must take a look here and understand and fully understand you know how does my process vary i must fully understand how does my process vary and then now i know that all all these guys here represent they represent problems you know here i am talking about scrap why because these parts here were produced with a diameter that is below specification limit see see so observe 24 percent and i have a projection of 20.54 or 20.60 depending on how i am estimating standard deviation but the point is the point is i must have these three elements i must have central tendency for example mean in this case normal probability distribution variation some measurement of variation in this case standard deviation and i must i must compare this to customer specification and in this case i have two so i have customer specifications right so so <laughs> I don't know if you guys will believe me, but it's incredible. It's incredible, incredible. The number of projects that I see, that I see sometimes at the university, sometimes in the, in the I would say in the academic world in general, many times in corporations, in many corporations, I do a lot of consultancy, guys, a lot. A lot, 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 lot. I have more than 35,000 students and more than 20 years on the road. It's incredible the number of projects where they just skip measure phase. They just jump. <laughs> they just jump from project, from problem statement to sometimes solutions, straight to solutions, sometimes to root cause analysis without having a baseline. So please, ladies and gentlemen, this is non-negotiable. You cannot run a Lean Six Sigma project without having a baseline, a precise and accurate baseline. You must know exactly how is your process now exactly you must have a picture like that okay i know that i i must be between operating between 9 and 15 okay now i have a mean of 9.84 standard deviation of one so i have right now 24 percent of scrap you know i'm not respecting the lower spec limit yeah Apparently, I don't have any problem with the upper spec limit, okay? And if you are a My Green Belt student, you know that this is the most important guy, right? Z-Bank Sigma level. And please do not add up 1.5. If you are my student, you do not add up 1.5 Sigma, please. Please. This is part of the pitfall related to measure phase, you know? My main message in terms of pitfall for to avoid in measure phase is please, please, you cannot, you cannot simply present a mean. No, no, no. This is not Lean Six Sigma project. And mainly you cannot simply skip and then you go back later. Many times, many times what happens is, what happens is, let, let me tell you, let me tell you. What happens in real life is when you kick off your project and you start start um, drafting your your project charter, it's common. It's natural. It's na come on. Let 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 let's let's let me ask you this. Imagine that we are 
Yeah, right now we are starting together a project. We are starting together a project. And I have just pointed the problem. I have just pointed the problem. For example, for example, I want to play my guitar and there is no sound. That's the problem. I know this is a known solution problem, but I'm trying to play my guitar and there is no sound. There is no sound. Please, what would you do? What, what would you do at this point? And I'm writing down the project charter. Marcelo, he comes from a family of musicians. He loves music. He loves music. He needs to play because it's, you know, it has to do with his re energy. He, he will be re energized by music. You know, so you have the beautiful pyramid structure writing down your problem statement. Amazing, wonderful, you know. And then you write down the negative consequence. If Marcelo does not play the guitar, blah, 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 blah. I mean, but you are you are touching the process. It's a pro it is a process that you know. You, you know. You know what's going on here. You know the cause. At least a potential cause. So at this point, people just jump straight to the root cause analysis, to RCA. Believe me, one of the most challenging things when you are running a meeting to validate your project charter or to, to, to build your project charter, one of the most challenging things is how to control people for not jumping straight to the root causes. So see, in this case, they are just skipping, they are just skipping the baseline. They are just, you know, jumping straight from define phase to analyze phase. And this is much, much more common than you may at this point consider think, you know. So when we talk about measure phase, do not fall into this trap of a one PowerPoint bar. What's the size of the problem? No, no, no. What's the diameter? It's 9.8. No, 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 no. You will ask for the raw data and you will run a capability analysis. So my recommendation, my second, you know, pitfall to avoid when running Lean Six Sigma projects is get your Sigma level. This is non-negotiable. If you don't have a Sigma level, you don't have measure phase. I'll say again. If you don't have a Sigma level, you do not have your measure phase completed. This is non-negotiable. No mean, we don't get, don't accept mean. We don't accept mean and standard deviation because we must have specification limits. Unless you have discrete data, then it's a different conversation. <clears throat> you focus on the percentage of defective items, for example, binomial probability distribution, yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah, does it make sense? Carlos, to the bom, meu amigo. How are you? Carlos Alberto is one of the... Um, yeah, if my memory is okay, Carlos Alberto, you are my, my BB student, my black belt student. Is that correct? I think. I think. Please let me know. Let me know. Yeah, yes, beautiful, beautiful. I saw by the picture. Wonderful, Carlos Alberto. Fera. Fera means. Fera means what, Carlos? Fera means wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to have you here, Carlos. Thank you so much. Yeah, so please let me know if it makes sense on define phase. Please do not, when you are selecting your pro problem to be solved, do not simply check the box because you want to have a certified project, you know? On measure phase, it's sigma level or nothing. Sigma level or nothing, okay? And as part of this pitfall, we are talking about do not accept skipping measure phase, do not accept 
uh, having only bar chart, you know, only a, a, a bar, you know, only one single single number, you know, we don't we don't like that. Okay, we want to have a complete and rich picture. There is obviously obviously a lot of other elements. For example, the importance of measurement system analysis, gauge RNR, accuracy, stability, for sure. But one important pitfall to avoid is simply simply considering only mean or only mean and standard deviation without specification limits or 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 nothing yeah and uh, and and considering that you will run this later do, do not do that okay beautiful no amex uh, uh he is my student in brazil in portuguese we do have black belt train at this point we still do not have um a black belt certification program uh, in English, not yet, not yet, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe in the near future, yeah. Wonderful, analyze phase, my 30 pitfall to avoid when you are running Lean Six Sigma projects is uh, on analyze phase, do not run brainstorming for potential causes please ladies and gentlemen do not run brainstorming for potential cause if you took my master class here for uh, related to Ishikawa you probably noted that I reinforced this point very much see you are a Sherlock Holmes you are a detective an investigator you know, an investigator do not show up and says, okay, let's brainstorm, you know, who is the killer, who is the, you know, why, who is the responsible for this crime. A detective do, does not operate like this. So how do we run, how do we run a potential cause exercise you know how can we diverge how can we populate an Ishikawa my recommendation is multiple one-to-ones I'm gonna schedule a meeting with David David Lazarus and I will schedule a 30 minute conversation with him and get from him you know his impressions his ideas in terms of potential cause the same with just the same with abiero the same with carlos the same with Eshi, the same with yotan the same with rodrigo you know thank you rodrigo <laughs> the same with amex with chipo yeah why 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 Yes, Margaret, have one-to-one -one meetings, individual meetings. Because the chance that David will open up his heart with me only and protect, and I'll be protecting his voice versus putting David in front of a lot of other people, I can create, you know, barriers that are absolutely, absolutely avoidable. This is very powerful, very, very powerful. The only problem of, of running in this way is that you spend much more time and you need to deduplicate, you need to affinitize, yeah? You need to, to concentrate all these voices and you need to, to, to shrink, shrink, so the list will be much, much shorter when you eliminate the items that are duplicated yeah this is very important but please do not run a brainstorming for potential cause because the, the chances that you one do not catch important critical potential causes will be very high very high they will simply not appear you know and second the chances that your meeting becomes a, a mess a chaos is very high too okay you definitely want to avoid that so as to get diverse and gather a wide range of information 
yeah Pareto, yes correct correct so you need to 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 listen to the voice to the different voices from people that are involved in the process it's a different voice collection at the beginning of your project at the beginning of your project is voc vob voice of the customer voice of the of the business now it's more voe voice of the employee voice of the experts yeah for potential cause and then obviously after that we have gamble walk in gamble walk we have all the time and then we have data collection and then we have hypothesis test to validate we have the statistical methods to validate the root causes yes but the pitfall that i want you to to avoid on analyze phase is running kaizen events for potential cause or running brainstorm meetings for potential cause you know the risk is too high too high again of not getting the critical potential causes and or uh, simply having you know very very chaotic meetings very chaotic because you you will be touching sensitive items sensitive topics yeah what about Pareto then you can use Pareto later on yeah, because see, on uh, analyze phase, we have basically three steps, three phases, th three sub phases in analyze phase. Uh, we have potential cause identification, potential cause prioritization qualitatively with pairwise, uh, with uh, multi voting, yeah, using multi voting or any other technique, qualitative technique. And then for the most critical potential causes, you can run you must run some quantitative analysis, statistical analysis. Yeah? And then Pareto will be very useful here to show the most critical potential causes and also the validated root causes. Yeah, so again, first pitfall to avoid on the fine phase. Please do not simply check the box when we are talking about selection of your problem to be solved. Second, uh, measure phase. We do not accept anything different from sigma level. We must, it's mandatory to have a sigma level. Analyze phase, avoid the pitfall of running brainstorming sessions for potential cause, okay? Please let me know if we are on the same page. Please let me know if we are on the same page. Type here for me. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to take them, okay? Wonderful, excellent. Ha! On improve phase, on improve phase. This is this is so important. Please, you do not need to be the hero. So don't play hero. You don't need to to be the hero because see. Lean Six Sigma, mainly Six Sigma, is the method created in, a, in the United States. And nothing, please don't get me wrong, nothing against the United States. But everybody knows that Americans, Americans, North Americans, Central Americans, South Americans, we love heroes with the volume, the number of heroes that we find in the United States, for example. It's incredibly higher than in any other place on Earth. You know, the, the, it's 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 cultural, and now and now Superman comes in, and now Iron Man, and now see the Spider Man, and now and, and and then we kind of and then we kind of transfer our hopes, you know, to these heroes, and then we feel better with that. Again, we are not judging if this is right or wrong. We are not judging if this is right or wrong. But the, 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 the belt structure, the master black belt, the black belt, the green belt, the yellow belt, the white belt, see the belt structure uh, mimics a lot, you know, or, or this structure has a lot from this culture of now the hero arrived, you know, came in. And the Japanese management school, school of management, does not like this very much. And I do understand. I do understand. Because if you depend on a hero, for sure, 
for sure for sure your sustainability of improvements are in serious risk if you depend on one person you know to have the let's get the the best the you know the best ideas from chipo if i depend on chipo you know this is a problem this is a problem this is not sustainable yeah maybe chipo will find another job and there is a syndrome named not invented here so process owners all process owners and all you know uh, associates that are working on a certain process they feel at some level you know what we call not invented here i try to avoid <laughs> this is very common between you know husband and wife this is very common sometimes a husband will not accept an idea just because the idea came from from his wife and the same sometimes the wife will not get that idea absorb that idea just because it came from the husband you know just because it was not invented here and all of us we have a little bit of that some of us maybe will have a little bit more you know but all of us we have at least a little bit of this and we must uh, at some point respect that because as a belt you are an external element to the process almost always you are not part of the process so you must on top of everything respect i must respect amex margaret aiman kiryu you know uh, guru prasanna chipo because they are the ones that are touching the processes so the pitfall to avoid is do not impose anything please do not force anything do not try simply to push your ideas into a process that is not yours <laughs> it's not your process respect the people that are there so listen to the voe more than never this is on improved phase please please listen let them shine you know let them bright and i am saying as someone that fights this problem until today because i am an artist yeah i like i like i like applause you know i like to be on stage this is good and bad this is good and bad and on improved phase when we are talking about solution this is bad because you tend not listening because you want to somehow to show off you know so you need to to calibrate that calibrate that calibrate that let them bright let them shine i i <laughs> uh i have a an interesting story to say in in 2005 2005 when I, I i left philips and i started working for delphi automotive systems you know that was an important transition in my life um important professional transition because it was my first let's say um senior uh, leadership position you know and i was um at that point 24 to 25 years old you know so um kind of still young and with a good leadership position as a black belt as a black belt working for delphi automotive systems and uh, i still did not understand at that time 
that uh, I mean the pressure that I was putting on my shoulders you know was absolutely unnecessary and for some reason I had in my mind that I had to solve all problems in seconds <laughs> I don't know why I don't know and I had like this pressure because my my salary was kind of doubled you know from Philips to Delphi and I had my my own my own uh, um, room my meeting room you know like so you know as a again as in a leadership position full of fantasies full of ghosts you know in my mind basically related to ego basically related to ego you know the black belt and all the black belt you know this is wrong when i understood that a, a, a good black belt, a good master black belt is humble. A good black belt, a good green belt, a good master black belt says, I don't know. I don't know. I need to study. I will check. I need to collect some data. You know, when I understood that, my life became much, 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 much better. And my career, boom. Yeah, because the hero hero is anxious, anxious. Hero is suffering. You know, most most of the times, you know, the, you are in trouble all the time. You know, you get all the responsibility for you unnecessarily. And then I remember that my good friend, my close friend Adriano, came to my to my to my came to my office. I had my own office, you know. And then knocked the door. And then I had this kind of <laughs> ridiculous. I had this kind of yes. <laughs> even even the voice was different. Yes. How can I help you? How can I help you? Oh. We we need to run an audit in a supplier. Can you go with us? Because we are facing some quality problems, you know. And then, again, I was new to the company. At that point, I was not the, the best person to go there. But, but I said to Adriano, yes, I'll go there. I'll go there with you. And then we went to this audit. I was completely lost, completely lost, because I was new to the process. I was working for Philips TV, electronics. I know I knew nothing about automotive. Zero, zero, zero. How could I run an audit or support an audit? And I was there completely lost completely lost and Adriano presented me to the suppliers saying oh this is Marcelo Fernandez he's the black belt the new black belt for Delphi automotive systems and um and I was yeah yeah and and the idea was to catch some problems during the audit you know Adriano told me Marcelo please sharp eyes sharp eyes to catch some problems you know and then the entire morning I was not able to catch anything zero 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 then after lunch zero zero at the end of the audit at the very end of the audit you know adriano told me hey marcelo take a look on the raw materials because there are some aluminum bars there are some um, uh, steel steel bars iron bars you know and they must be properly identified aluminum is blue must must present a blue mark iron is red you know and then please take a look because they are mixing up materials and then i remember it was my last chance to add some value you know and then i remember that um, i was looking in the materials and there was nothing 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 and then i see and then i see at the very end at the very end and then i see um in the floor in the floor a metal bar a metal bar you know in the floor something like this 
and then I catch this bar, I look, there is no mark, there is no blue mark, no red mark, and then I thought, this is my chance to add some value in this audit, and then I raise my hand and says, and said, who can explain to me what is this bar that is in the wrong position, it is in the floor, it is in the floor, and there is no mark, no blue mark, no red mark. Who can explain this to me? And then a guy comes. First of all, that they showed at me and said, wow, thought, man, wow, his guy, this guy speaks because I was silently the entire audit, you know? And then the guy comes. Oh, no, no, no. This is the bar from the window that someone was cleaning up. <laughs> then just, just put the bar and it fit perfectly, you know, in the window. It has, it had nothing to do with the raw material. It was not a metal bar from the raw material. You know? So it was a ridiculous, ridiculous comment that I have presented. And again, just uh, the entire event, one day of pure waste, one day of pure waste. Why? Simply because at that point, I did not understand that I did not have to play the hero. I did not have to be the hero. We can play together. We can work together. And it's okay. It's okay if you don't know. It is okay. It is okay if you need more time, yeah, to collect some data to talk to more people, to go to Gamba, yeah? So please type here for me, yes, if you understood that you do not want to fall into this trap of playing hero. Please type here for me, type here for me. If Lean encourages people to be free to things to improve process or operating without fear or reprisal. Why you encourage one-to-one -one meeting to avoid the same? That's a great, great, great question, Aziz. Thank you so much. Lean encourages people, encourages people. One of the 14 points from Damien, it's really operate without fear. For sure, for sure. But unfortunately, 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 the reality is very different, very different than this. So if you are immersed on an environment where the basis of lean is fully there, is fully there, respect, the base of lean is respect for people. If you are working on an environment where it really exists, fully exists, then you can run brainstorming for potential causes. But unfortunately, the reality is very, many times very difficult. There are power games, there are politics, and part of our mission is to protect the source. So when they open up and they talk about a potential cause, you will take note protecting the source you know protecting the source i had a chance to share aziz one ex one project that i ran in malaysia in asia malaysia close to singapore where uh the um, the expenses with uh at and t so before before internet was so easy to run these kind of things here the, the meetings, we, we had meetings using AT&T codes. So we saw that in one specific department, the amount of money spent per month tripled. And then we started a project to identify. And the root cause was one senior executive was using his AT&T code to talk to his lovers. See, this is extremely sensitive, extremely hard, 
hard to be, to be opened, extremely difficult to be opened on a, on a brainstorming. And people knew. It came from people. There were people, there were people that knew about that. But unfortunately, because of the immaturity, immaturity of the cultural system, the basic lean pillars were not there, were not there. And this is said, this is said, yeah. But again, if you are on an environment where respect is really established as a foundation, then you can go ahead and run, yeah. Does, does, <coughs> does it make sense? Please let me know. Wonderful. Perfectly. And you are very humble to tell us that story and recognize you were wrong. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's, yeah, because life life becomes much, in, in reality, life becomes much, much easier. Yes. Um, natural. Yeah. Natural is always better. Natural is always better, long term, long term. Yes, it's always better. Yeah, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. So, how many? Let me see if we are on the same page. How many pitfalls have I presented so far? How many pitfalls? How many pitfalls? One per phase. So at this point, I have presented four pitfalls, and then we are coming to our uh, to the end of this session, and I'll be presenting the fifth pitfall. Yeah, that has to do with handing over to the process owner. Okay, handing over to the process owner. So on control phase, when you finish your project, it's natural that the level of enthusiasm is super high. It is super, super high, super high. And then when it happens, it's normal. It's normal that we take for granted few elements. For example, control plan. It's super important, super important that in control phase, you hand over to the process owner uh, all the elements of your project but mainly your control plan what is your control plan the set of input variables axes that you must control in order to guarantee that your y is in control yeah the set of axes that you must keep close eyes in order to guarantee that your why is okay very important very important yeah so please do not fall into this trap of you know simply or only celebrating the positive results that you got you know that you got uh, and forgetting you know a proper closure of your project this is very common this is very common. This is the top reason for, um, for not sustainability of your positive results. Yeah. Inadequate hand over to process owner. Inadequate process of handing uh, your project over to the process owner. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Aziz. I'm glad to know. I'm glad to know. Your question was amazing. Very, very good question. Aziz, very good question. Yeah. So, quick recap. Quick recap. Five pitfalls to avoid. So, again, smart people learn from their mistakes. Um, wise people <laughs> learn from the mistakes of other people. So I, I, I prepared here a mix of um, uh, five pitfalls that came from a mix of my only, only uh, mistakes that I've made, the mistakes of my mentees, yeah? And what, what I see every day 
on my consultancy um, work yes and uh, and then the first one please do not select the problem to be solved just as a check in the in a check in the box mode please do not second on measure phrase please don't skip this phase and I know that maybe it will sound weird but unfortunately in real world it happens quite a lot and uh, so it's non-negotiable to have a sigma level yeah analyze phase please 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 consider talking one-to-one -one, multiple one-to-ones you know to, to get to give a chance to the employees to open up their hearts fully fully as a therapy session you know as, almost as a therapy session and, and and respect the source yeah protect the source improve phase don't be the hero don't play the hero you don't need to be the hero so ask you know ask the employees the experts how would they improve how would they address the root cause that was validated you know on a corrective way and on a preventive way and control phase please please do not take for granted just because the the, the initial results after you implemented your solutions you know remember that that let me let me quickly run here this is powerful this is very powerful so let's suppose uh let's suppose you have you have this situation before yeah and again our y here is diameter and then as you saw we were off right and then now after we implemented our improvement um, actions we have from 9 to 15 6 12 let's suppose we have this 0 0.5 let's suppose this is the data post improvement okay data post improvement so now we are we are at the beginning of control phase when we are comparing uh, the stage before with the stage after the famous before and after and then stage Normally, when we see this picture here, normally when we see this picture, I mean, it's an explosion of enthusiasm. It's an explosion of joy, you know? Uh, let me add up one thing here. Because now from uh, 9.84, now we are operating here at 12.193 and the variation has reduced quite a lot. And we can plot now the specification limits, right? We can plot the specification limits. Uh, diameter, by variables, stage remember the specification limits from 9 to 15 if i am not wrong 9 from 15. so when i when i see that now my car is very well parked in this garage before i had a lot of problems here see and now it's amazing now it's wonderful at this point it's dangerous because we tend we tend to simply say okay now it's all right now let's just say where is my certificate you know where is my certificate that's what normally happens and this is dangerous this is dangerous because you definitely uh, want that there is more to do here and one of the things you, you must at least run um a high level fmea to understand the risks associated to your improved process um your improved process and you must have a control plan to properly hand your improved process over 
to the process owner. Yeah? Wonderful! So, five pitfalls to avoid in Lean Six Sigma projects. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a pleasure to be here with Adronic, with David, with Aziz, with Abeko. Thank you so much, Naomi. Thank you, Yonis. Thank you, Yotan. Thank you, Evans. Thank you, Adronic. Thank you, Chipo. Thank you, Maudeline. Thank you, Camogelo. Thank you so much, Joshua. It was a pleasure. I wish you guys an amazing rest of week. Next week, because of the white belt, we will not have our weekly touch base yet, but we'll be together in the following week. So in uh, two weeks from now. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.